Hey everybody and welcome to the lounge. All my fellow loungers, chillers, ballers, and grillers on our special Christmas chilling and grilling. Well, we're not really grilling, but we are chilling. It's kind of dreary outside today, so I'm cooking inside. Anyway, just gonna say, before anybody says anything, because I know there'll be something in the comments like, what, what's on Larry's shirt? As you can see, this is a picture of my brother who passed away about nine years ago. Um, his birthday is today, so I'm wearing this in memory of him. I miss him, and that's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, um, today's menu is going to be beef tenderloin. It's going to have horseradish and some Dijon mustard on it and some essence, of course. This is actually Emerald, Le 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 Emerald Legacy's recipe. But... I've altered it a little bit because I, I still use his essence and, and his uh, mustard and stuff like that. But there's a couple other things in there that I didn't want to use. But it's really his recipe, so it's not it's not an original recipe. It's but really, what is original? But you know, that's what inspired me to to cook this, and it's it's actually a really really good thing. This is what we cook on Christmas. Also, we're going to make something that we call yummy taters or yummy potatoes, and. Um, that is a family recipe that we have, so I hope you guys enjoy that. We'll also have some um, broccoli and carrots mix, too, for vegetables on the side. So stay tuned, put your feet up and relax, grab yourself something cold to drink, and we're going to get started. We have three different sets of ingredients because we're doing three different things right here. So we're going to go. We need about four potatoes, about medium size, sour cream, Cream of chicken soup, I think you guys saw that last time. Bay leaves, an onion, some butter, salt and pepper, which will be going for both of these. Essence, we will have some olive oil, some garlic, and I have Emerald's Dijon mustard, but you don't have to get Emerald's, you can just get Dijon mustard and that's that'll be fine. This is actually horseradish. We broke it in half because it's kind of obscene looking so to make it more family friendly we broke it in half anyway next is and that's that's going to be for our I should have had this over there okay it doesn't matter we'll put these over here and your beef tenderloin which is about what six seven inches something like that and uh this stuff is very expensive, so it come, you know, the one we got was gigantic, and we cut it in three spots, you know, three, three pieces, and I freeze the other ones, and then I'll be, I'll be cooking this one up. And for our vegetables, what we're doing is we're just having broccoli and carrots. And a lot of people might say, you know, you haven't made green beans or lima beans or peas. Unfortunately, I can't stand them, and I know Tom doesn't like them either. So, we just don't make them, and I don't think you'll see. I can't even stand the smell of them, got you know them them things. So, unfortunately, we're limited to what we we make because we're making what we like to actually eat. So, we're going to get started now. The first thing we want to do is get those potatoes boiling. We have our potatoes in the water. You see, cover up the potatoes. Unfortunately, I only have a small pot here. I would like a little bit bigger of a pot, but I want to use that one for the broccoli and the carrots because we forgot to start the dishwasher yesterday, right, Tom? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, one bay leaf. Toss it in there. And we're going to put some salt in there. Now remember, a lot of this salt will not actually stay into the potatoes, so just do that. Put your. And you want that water, of course, to boil. You want to get this until they are just barely tender, okay? Not like they're falling apart, just barely tender. The potatoes are really getting tender now, but not too tender. You know, you can see how the fork goes in rather easily. You don't want them to be falling apart. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat off, and I'm going to drain the water out of there, and I'm going to put them aside to let them cool off. So we have our vegetables cut up in here and you can break the broccoli off in the pieces like that and then the carrots let me 
put my fingers in here. Don't worry, the water will be boiling anyway. It's not now, I didn't turn it on. But the carrot's about the size of that, okay? What I'm gonna do in this water, I'm taking some Old Bay. You don't have to do this unless you really like Old Bay, but I'm sprinkling some Old Bay in there and letting them cook up in Old Bay. But we're just gonna let that sit here for now because it's only gonna take about 20, 25 minutes for those to, to cook and get nice and tender. So in the meantime, while we're waiting you know, to do that, our, uh, our potatoes are cooling off and now we're gonna start on our uh, mixture for the potatoes, which is gonna be a quarter stick of butter, which is actually a half a stick of butter. Not a quarter stick, excuse me, a quarter cup of butter, which is a half a stick of butter. Cause that's kinda, of... Tom, why didn't you say anything? Like I said. So I was about to, Oh. and then you corrected yourself before I could. Oh, sweet. Cause that was pretty stupid what I just said, wasn't it? Yes, one quarter of a stick does not equal half of a stick. <laughs> I know that's pretty stupid. And we have a half a cup of finely chopped onion, about that size. And we're going to saute them up until they get tender and translucent, which means what, Tom? Clear. Almost clear. Almost clear, right. So anyway, just let them go until they're sauteed. So we're gonna put our cream of chicken soup in there. And I'm gonna use a fork just because that's what I want to. Because you guys don't have to if you don't give a fork, but I want to use a fork. Tom just didn't like that little joke I did. It was a terrible I saw joke. It. Was it? Yes. Then mix in one and a half cups of sour cream. And this stuff is pretty thick. It's not so easy to get it out of this with a fork. I probably should have used a spatula instead. What did you think of that, Tom? Because huh? I'm not the one making this thing. Alright, that's good. Okay, we're gonna mix that up, but we're also gonna put some pepper. And you know me, I'm a fan of pepper. And a little salt, not, not tons of salt, because I'm not really, there's a lot of salt in that soup. And you can always, when it's all done, you can always put salt on your potatoes, but you can't take salt out of your potatoes. Words of wisdom right there, Tom, do you know that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mix that up nice like that. And then just set this aside until them onions are done. I want to show you something with our mixture here. It's really thick. See how thick that is? That's a little too thick. So take some milk. I'm taking 1% milk because that's what we have. And I'm going to pour a little bit in there. Mix this all up to make it thinner. Not a big deal. You just want to make it thinner. And that way, not yet, you gotta mix it a little bit better. Well, gonna add some more milk. Just a little bit more I'm gonna add. Eh, here more. Okay, mix this up good. Add your onions that are already sauteed in here. Then I will show you what's next. So we grated the potatoes up. As you can see, we kinda just you know, with the with the cheese grater, just use it. And uh, I guess I don't, I don't really want to touch them too much. They stick to your fingers really bad. And you can see they start turning brown. Don't worry about that. That's not going to hurt anything. But anyway, what you want to do is take a casserole dish. I'm going to use butter flavor pan. And that's about it right there. Now put your taters in there. And don't worry, I'm using a paper plate so they stick, that's that starch in them. Spread them out. You can put your hand in there like that, if they're clean, and burn them like Uncle Larry just did. That's fine. Then take your mixture and pour that, now I have the onions already mixed in here. Pour that over top of it. 
then preheat your oven to 350. And as soon as that's ready, we'll, we'll pop them in the oven. Spread that over top of them. You don't have to mix it up. It's going to go down inside them, believe me. Put that like that. Try to get it even so they cook evenly in there. Our oven just beeped, so that means it's ready to go. But before we even put them in the oven, I want to just tell you guys something because I'm really sorry. Because th this is me. I just always forget crap. Right, Tom? Eh, Shut up. Wow, okay. <laughs> anyway, you need cornflake crumbs. Okay? That's what I use. Kellogg's cornflake and some sharp shredded cheddar cheese. But see, I forgot because that's like the last step you do with this. So anyway, pop these in the oven. In the middle, in the middle of the oven. Pop that in there. Put your timer on for a half hour. Whoops. Let that go, and you know what? Until that actually gets done, we can't do our next step, which is gonna to be to get the meat ready because they use two different temperatures. So we'll wait till that's done. We'll put a little foil over that, put that on top of the stove, let it sit there, get the meat all ready, get the meat in there going, and we won't put that actually in there until the meat is actually out resting. Timer just beeped, so now, so just take these out and I'm going to set these here and put some foil over top of it so that they can just stay warm nice and heated up while I prepare the meat next. First thing, turn your pan on that you're going to sear the meat. Medium to high. Okay, now you're going to take some olive oil and pour some oil on your meat and then rub your meat with the olive oil. Get that all over your meat. Now, take your essence and just, you know, and this is up to you how much you actually want to put on there. You're not going to coat it like really thick. It's not like a rub. So, I'm just going to sprinkle it like that. Your pan's gonna get really hot and that's what you're waiting for right now. And then you're gonna sear it. So you might be wondering, how do I know if the pan's hot enough? Well, go, no, don't do that. That's stupid. Why would I put my finger in there and burn my hand? Just take a little bit of water, right? Dip your fingers in. You hear that? Look at the water bouncing around in there. Did you see that in case you didn't? There you go. All right, that's plenty hot enough. So now take the meat and this is going to create a lot of smoke. It's going to be roughly around two minutes for each side. You want it to get on the, you know, not black, but you want to get it on the dark side of it. So just keep an eye on it. And we're going to do all the way around this and on the ends. While your meat is searing, don't forget, turn your oven up to 425. We're almost done searing the whole thing. And if you guys are wondering why I actually am searing this, is because when you sear it, it, it kind of like locks in all the juices on the inside of that and everything. It keeps it keeps it nice and tender and everything. So uh, that's why we're doing this. And it is almost, almost ready. And then we'll put it in our pan and then we'll put it in the oven. So now we're ready to put it in the oven but I know that it's pretty smoky in your house. Make sure if you don't have an exhaust fan, you might want to open a window nearby because it gets pretty smoky in your house when you're searing the meat. So now we're going to pop it in the oven for 20 minutes. And in the meantime, we can start getting stuff ready that we're going to put on top of that. Like grating the horseradish. So just like you do the cheese, grate the horseradish. And now we need a cup and a half of this. 
So that's a lot of horseradish. Right, Tom? Yep. What's that? You wanted to do this while I filmed? What? Huh? What? I thought I heard something. Can't hear anything over the fan. Oh, how convenient for that. And as you can see, it's grating up there, and I got a long ways to go. We have about a cup and a half of horseradish, grated horseradish. And I'm going to take a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Throw that right in there. And this is actually two teaspoons of garlic, minced garlic I'm using. Now look, I showed you this garlic when you guys with the ingredients. But I took a little shortcut and I actually got my jar of minced garlic out. If you have this, use this. If you have that, use that. It's up to you. Anyway, mix that stuff up as well as you can and then just set that aside for later. The buzzer is going off, so we can stop that for now and take out the meat. Put that there. And now we are going to prepare this because it is going to go back in the oven. Before I actually start to prepare this, I want to remind you guys now. Now you're going to take your oven and you're going to turn it down to 400. Okay? And it's going to go in there for actually 40 minutes, but before we actually set the timer and everything, it's about two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Eh, but what you don't, I mean, it's about. So you just glob it on there. If you got yourself a brush for like barbecue sauce or something, I don't, I don't necessarily go by the actual measurements on it. I go by just coat it all nice and evenly on there you want to put it on all the sides except for the bottom don't bother putting it on the bottom because it's just going to fall off anyway hot pan okay after you do that take your remember there was garlic salt pepper and horseradish in there and now we are going to kind of cake that on there if you have more than enough don't worry about it because I'm sure you will and you know it's going to go into the bottom of the pan that's why the foil is down there because it's going to wind up burning and stuff on the bottom don't worry about it pack that all in there it's good stuff okay stay Okay, so I, I put all mine on there. Whatever stays on, stays on. Whatever falls off, falls off. And you are going to get, need some aluminum foil because you're going to cover this up. So now you can take that, wrap it up in foil, put that in your back in your oven. Remember, it turns it down to 400. And we are going to set the timer now for... Thirty minutes, and there's a reason for that. It's actually going to be in there for forty minutes, but at thirty minutes, we are going to uncover it, and that's when we're going to start our vegetables. So the timer went off for the thirty minutes. So what we're going to do right, now? Dad. So what we're going to do now is actually, you can just leave it there, take off the foil, try not to burn yourself. I would recommend using some sort of protective hand coverings, unlike Dad. Not me. Anyway, so now you can put it back in there. And you're going to put it in for 10 minutes. In the meantime, now it's time to turn on the vegetables. And we're going to get them boiling. That's going to take about 20 minutes. You can use a fork, see when they get tender, and then they'll be done. Our timer just went off. Let me turn that off. So we're going to take this out now. We're going to put this on the counter. I am going to take, which side do you want to be on, Tom? You want to dance? I don't know. I'm trying dance? to figure it out. Somehow our meat turned into a ball. I don't remember being like that before. Do you notice that? Yeah. 
we're gonna put that on a cutting board like that right and then I got a piece of foil out like that and we need to let the meat rest because it's tired it had a hard day so just put a little tent over it. let it go to sleep let it rest for a little bit okay in the meantime now we are we have our vegetables cooking we're gonna check them and we're gonna prepare our potatoes to go into the oven but first let's turn our oven down to 350. We can uncover our yummy taters right now because we're going to put, oh, before I get started on that, we moved this to the high burner because it hadn't started boiling yet. We need that to get boiling. We need that to get going. So just be mindful of that. Anyway, so now I'm going to take cheese and I am my grated you can use whatever kind of cheese you want. If you would rather use Parmesan cheese, that's fine. You know, whatever kind, it doesn't matter. But we're gonna use sharp. Is this extra sharp? No, it's just sharp. Holy oh, sharp, I just cut myself. Yeah, I know that was stupid too, right Tom? These are the jokes. Yeah, this is what Tom has to deal with. Right Tom? Yeah. And now I'm taking our cornflake crumbs and get them all over the stove and on the actual cheese and potatoes. Yeah, Tom's got a mess to clean up. Anyway, what? What? I heard something. Did you hear something? Anyway, so there you go. There's that. Now we're going to put that in the oven now for 15 minutes. In the meantime, those vegetables should be getting close to being, well, hopefully it boils soon. Yes, it's boiling now. Stove's ready, gonna turn the timer on. Waiting for the veggies, our meat's resting. It's just a matter of time now. Potatoes are done for, as I say, yummy taters. Put them out there. Guess what? It's almost like beautiful timing to turn that off because the vegetables are actually done too. So I can turn that off. I'm going to drain the water out of here. I'm going to put about two to two and a half tablespoons of butter inside there. Mix that all up, put a little salt in there, a little pepper, and they're good to go. And then we're going to plate. Now it's time to slice the meat. You want to do it about a half inch to three quarters of an inch slices and hopefully you're going to say that it's perfectly done. Oh that is. Cut that up just straight down about a half inch to three quarter inch slices. A lot of this stuff falls off of it. Don't worry about that. Is this still hot? Yes it is. Am I burning my hands? Eh, slightly. Does Tom care? I don't know. Does Tom care? I mean, you've burned your hands constantly today. They're probably like leather by now. So we'll take that as a big no. There we go. There we go. And now it's going to be time for plating. You ready? Yep. All right. I try the potatoes also. Nope. Hmm. This is our. You all right? You making a mess? Hot. Oh. I missed you burning your mouth. Dang. No, I mean, you all right? Oh, you want to get to the drinking part so you can cool off your tongue? Oh, you gotta wait now. Anyway. This is our Christmas meal. This is what we eat for Christmas. And ha haven't, you all right? <laughs> Tear it up a bit. Oh. Haven't said that, it's not Christmas yet, but we're doing it before Christmas so you can get an idea in case you wanted to cook this for dinner, for Christmas, that you guys can do it. Anyway, you know, on behalf of me and Tom, you know, we hope you have guys have a Merry Christmas and have a good meal. And also, you know, my brother, I'm representing him today, and I just, you know, I miss him, and today's his birthday, so I say, 
Till next time, grab yourself something cold to drink, put your feet up and relax. We'll meet you at the lounge. And to my brother, I say cheers.